Welcome back to another YouTube Tuesday where I go over a channel that you definitely should subscribe to. Now the channel that I'm going to be featuring today is a channel that hasn't garnered as much attention as it should. One of the things that I've noticed is that the repair industry is a very small niche on YouTube. And so sometimes a channel that has really good content and is focused on something really specific may not end up garnering the attention that they deserve. Today we're going to be looking at a channel called iBoard Repair and this guy is named Aaron Harrington. And if you're looking to get into logic board repair, he has some solid content. A lot of it is in long form, which means that his videos are going to be more than an hour long, sometimes even two. But like other channels that I've shown, it doesn't leave things out and he walks you through his thought process so that you can learn with him. Today we'll watch one of his shorter videos together and I'll give you my thoughts along the way so that you might get a small portion of what watching his videos and subscribing to his channel will be. Let's get into the video. Hello, this is Aaron with iBoard Repair, and today I'm going to be showing you the live diagnosis and repair of an iPhone 12 Pro motherboard that's in here for data recovery. Um, this customer stated that this phone has just died spontaneously and they did nothing to it. It just stopped working on its own. And I've already removed the screen and taken a look at the inner components and uh, nothing's jumping out. But my first step when I'm diagnosing these boards is to take my DC power supply probes and uh, see what they're telling me when I tell the phone to boot. So when I prompt the phone to boot by pressing the power button, I get a small amperage spike, as you can see. Uh, this usually indicates uh, normally a power rail failure. Uh, normally I'll find like a shorted power rail, but that's not always the case. Something is just preventing this CPU from turning on, so my job is to figure out what that is. Um, my first step when I'm working with this is to usually assume that I have a shorted power rail. It could also be like a, a loose boost coil, but checking power rails is always a good first step. And my NAND power rails are already on this top layer and exposed. I checked these uh, earlier and they were... Now NAND, one of, the thing, one, of the t one of the signs that you'll be getting a NAND failure is if you get, when you do probe, when you do try to boot it with the power supply and the battery connector, you'll typically get a draw of like 0 0.05 instead of, uh, instead of a proper boot sequence when you go to power it on. So it's probably not that, but let's see what he says. They were fine, but I can show you again. I have my 2v6 line, my 1v2 line, and my uh, OV9 line. So this is my 2v6, it looks normal. My 1v2 looks normal. And my OV9 all looks normal. So a NAND short is not the problem in this case. That's a very common problem. So I'd like to check that first. Um, but I've done as much as I can with just the screen taken off. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this motherboard out of the housing and uh, we can diagnose it further. Okay, with the motherboard out of the housing, I wanna make sure I still have the same behavior. Sometimes other components that are connected to the motherboard can cause it not to boot. And so isolating the motherboard and then testing it again might, I mean, it's not too common, but it might be the solution. It might help you diagnose the solution. And it looks like I do. So I still want to go off the assumption that I have a bad power rail. So I'm going to expose the area around the PMIC and start checking those, those lines. So here's the PMIC, but we should take a look at our board view software. So he didn't show removing the shield. Now this is something that if you haven't done before, you really want to be careful on a, on a phone like this because it's a sandwich board, which means it's subjecting it to heat can cause an issue. Uh, if you aren't careful, one of the things that you can do is you can basically wrap the other 
part of the board in something like Gapton tape so that it doesn't shift at all when you're heating it up just in case the solder that is in between the sandwich board melts. It doesn't shift the board around and or pop up or do anything weird. So you can clamp it down when you're removing the shield. You can also uh, peel back kind of like a there are other techniques to, to there are other techniques to, to removing that shield, but I won't get into those right now. So I have my 12 Pro open and uh, we should look at as many power rails as we can. Typically, I like to try to find uh, any power rails that have a coil connected to the PMIC as well as the CPU. And those in general are, are good lines to check. Other good lines are going to be uh, RAM. So 1V8S2 is our RAM line, as well as 1V1 or 1V06. And OV6 is another good one to check. There it is. Those are just some of the lines. There's a, there's a lot to check, but those are my general rules. NAND, RAM, and PMIC outputs. It is also possible that this is a sandwich issue. Um, so we'll get to that if we check all of these and uh, it doesn't solve. The sandwich issue, just so you know, that basically means that the joints between the top board and the bottom board, something's broken. It could be that a pad is missing or the or an impact caused the solder joint to actually physically crack, creating kind of like a cold uh, solder joint where it's not actually soldered. Um, we saw this. Uh, this is very common on a sandwich board. This is something we've been seeing ever since the iPhone 10 came out. Love it. Now he's just testing a bunch of lines with his multimeter, seeing if any of them are shorted. Or we're getting an, uh, an irregular value that he can compare to uh, his schematic. Uh, okay, most of the power rails seem to be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and split the sandwich here and uh, let's take a look at the more inner components. I have my heating platform here set to uh, 235, 230. And this will take some time to reach the proper temperature. So I'll go ahead and pause the video and I'll be back with you once it's ready to split. Okay, this looks like it's ready to pull. So everything looks normal. I'm just gonna make sure the boost coil is on here firmly. Then I think I'll just retest it, see if the amp shell is still the same now that it's split. <laughs> there it is. Boost coil fell off. It's a very common issue on this model. Yeah, so this is a common problem on the 12 Pro. That's why I knew to kind of check here. And uh, yeah, I just need to uh, get a new one of these on here and uh, this will turn on again. I'll be able to pull data. So this is good. This is quite an easy one. I'm glad to see this. And uh, this is one of the more common problems I see on this model. So I, I need to check here just from experience. I've seen this problem many times. So in general, a small spike or, or even no amp draw before a prompt to boot or after prompt to boot usually means either a bad power rail and checking NAND first is always uh, just the most convenient because NAND is usually right on top. And uh, on the 12 Pro series specifically, or even the 12 Pro Max, um, the boost coil is always the next thing I check. Without that coil, you know, that coil acts basically like the bridge between 
the two lines. It's like literally if you had two islands next to each other and you had a bridge, you couldn't get across the the river or the lake or whatever without that bridge. And so when that bridge literally gets lifted off the board and splits away, you can see the pads that uh, this coil needs to make those connections from the wire to the uh, to from one side to the other. They're still on the board where the rest of the coil popped off. So without that connection, you're not going to be able to get the bridge. Therefore, the power isn't going to be communicating between the two lines and you aren't going to get a, a boot because this is one of those crucial lines so that you can get power from the PMIC across the coil. And so it's definitely needed. Now he's adding some low melt solder here to loosen up the, uh, the grab that the, these, those pads have on the pads on the board. Uh, it's probably some low melt, like a 138 solder so that he can pop those off and get a new coil and put it on. Coils are kind of hard to salvage just because of the thermal mass behind them. And, uh, um, but with experience like he has, it's not a, not a big problem. And uh, the boost coil is for the boost circuit that uh, boosts the voltage when it goes low and the phone doesn't work without that, without that circuit present. See, he's pushing it off with the tweezers. Both of them getting a little pad to slide off. He's added some flux. Now he's tinning the pads. Salvaging one from a donor board. You can see it's got a lot of missing components. I'll just take this boost coil from this 11 Pro. Takes a bit of time and you want to be really careful. You'll see it start to move and then you'll be able to lift it, but you don't want to force these up, otherwise it'll just completely disintegrate. Now if this is one of your first time doing this, you really want to cover up like the CPU with the heat sink or something because you're right next to it done this plenty so he's redirecting the air away from it kind of not pointing it directly at the CPU and he's got low melt on there which means it's going to go on there quickly so it's kind of safe this only comes with experience So now that that boost coil is on there, I should have a normal amp draw when I prompt this phone to boot. So let's check that out before we are getting a small spike. And now this already looks much better and uh, I don't even need to wait. I'm sure it's booting. So the 12 Pro, I can pull data with just the top board only. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll grab my parts and I'll show you that it's turning on and then uh, that will be that. So let's see if it turns on. There's our Apple logo. And 
and there it goes. Looks like it booted up. I'll unplug it for now because I don't have a computer free to take the data, but it is booting. And it went dim just because proximity sensor isn't plugged in. And uh, I've been away a little bit. I haven't been making too many videos because I've been very busy, uh, but I want to start making them again. Um, but I do in general do live demonstrations. So I just chose this phone out of my queue and I'm not really sure how it's going to go. Uh, in this case, it was the boost coil, which is a pretty common problem on the 12 Pro. Uh, many people still don't know about it, however. So showing how the DCP DC power supply reacts um, when we have this problem before the problem's fixed is a uh, is a good symptom to know. So um, just a very small spike. And if you if you miss it, it almost looks like it does nothing. So that's what the DC power supply does um, when we have a boost coil that's loose. So the customer is going to have access to their photos now and they're going to be very happy. And uh, this went great. So thanks for watching this. Hope you have a good one. Bye. So there you go. There's a little taste of what he has to offer. Now, obviously, this phone probably could be completely fixed if you were to re-sandwich the boards and reinstall it. Um, if you pull it up perfectly, he'd be able to sandwich it back together without having to re-ball it. And I've shown how to do that in previous videos, but there you go. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Go and check out his content. These YouTube Tuesdays, these are solely channels that I've selected. There's, they haven't asked, but if you have a channel that you have in mind that you'd like for me to check out, leave it in the comments below. I'd like to hear what channels are out there that aren't garnering as much attention as they should. Or if there's a channel that you really, really like that you'd like for, for others to know about as well, leave it in the comments below. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.